am Abdul Rahman. I'm a lecturer at a public university in Kenya. I deliver lectures in computing and informatics. In our last lesson, we discussed about uh, the if else if block, and onto that we had seen that actually when a condition it is true, then it executes a particular statement. When it is false, it seeks for a condition, the next condition, and then when it is true, moves on to execute statement two. Otherwise, if it is false again, it looks for a condition three and execute if it is true a statement three. However, this one will go on and on until uh, when all the conditions are not met, then there is a default else statement to be executed. Today, we are taking up another concept whereby we are going to ask ourselves what is a nested if block control structure. And in that particular journey, we are going to define what is it, we are going to find out its syntax, and then finally, we are going to implement. So, let's start with it, its definition. So, the if else statement block, basically, it's just, it is a concept whereby we have uh, we have an if uh, condition within another if condition. So uh, we have actually whereby another if statement, so we'll have another if statement inside another if statement. So let's conceptualize it using up a, a diagram. So if we are saying here, we are starting our program here, and basically we have a condition number one here, so that will be call up a C1, and uh, this particular condition, if it is true, then what will happen? We have our statement one being executed. However, if it is false, if it is false, we are having up another condition here. Condition 2. And that particular condition 2, if it is true, we'll have another statement 2, which is going to be executed. While when it is false again, what will happen here? We'll have an else statement. So here we'll have the else statement being executed. And uh, all of this, when they are executed, what will happen after putting up this particular statement? All of them, they're going to go to the else statement, which is of the first condition. So we have two L statements. So this will have the L statement of the first condition. And this one also comes back the L statement of the first condition. And finally, we come to our end of a program. So this is a flow diagram, how it's supposed to go. So let's see the second part of it, the syntax, how it will look like. So a syntax also is a bit complicated. But let's see how we can do it. So you say if condition, if there is a condition, so we open up our curly bracket and we give up a statement. So within this particular condition one, we don't close it up. We ask another if statement. So if condition two, then what will happen? You give up a statement, else you give up 
another statement. So, this particular if statement has got is if and is else. This one doesn't have its else. So, here now, you are closing up and you are bringing up the else statement of the first condition. And then you are saying, here, put up a statement. And that's the time actually you exit. So, this is basically explains, uh, uh, explains our definition on that particular perspective. So, let's come up to the last part, how we're going to implement. So, our implementation will be very simple and straightforward. We're going to ask up a user to enter two numbers and find out if they are uh, odd or they're even. So let's go to the C++ and try to implement that, uh, that a user is supposed to enter two numbers to find out if it is odd or it is even. So let's have our two numbers here as uh, uh, num1. So we're going to say int num1 and num2. So basically what you're going to tell up the user so we are telling them uh, print f we are telling them print f and to enter two numbers to find out if uh, either even or odd so basically that is the statement when execute this particular uh, program and then basically we are going to scan f here basically we are actually capturing two numbers so that will be percentage d and again percentage d for the second number num1 and num2 and then we are accessing their address the address it is actually num1 and uh, the address is actually num2 and all statement must be terminated so we terminate our statement there then we are putting up our nested if now so we are saying if num1 modulus 2 equals to 0 then what do we do and then what do we do so basically here we are saying what do we do here we are saying printf and you tell up the user the first number is odd. So we are going to tell us a user our first number actually it is odd. Now interesting enough we are telling up the user our first number it is odd but here we are not closing up this particular if statement with our else what do we do we ask up again another if statement if we are putting up another condition if num2 now if somebody have enter num2 uh, we are talking about modulus 2 now here we are saying not equal to 0 what message do we give so here we open up again and close back again and here we are telling uh, them to say your number actually it is odd so uh, this is the first one we should tell them actually the number is even the first number it is even so this we are going to tell them this is actually the second number so this will be our second number 
our second number is odd and we have to terminate that particular one so we have terminated that and here uh, after doing that we are putting up our else statement so we are saying uh, else spelling mistake so our else you are putting up opening and closing bracket again and here what are we telling them we are telling them else so else we are printing up your second number actually it is even your second number is even and actually we are terminating so basically what we have we have finished up with our first statement and inside it we had an if and an else so now from here now we are moving up into our last part of it so this one uh, finishes up our first statement here so here comfortably you can put up our else and opening and closing curly bracket whereby basically what you can say else else your first number it is odd so else your first number it is odd it's whereby we are finishing it. we are finishing up uh, our second else so if you can see here this particular uh, opening curly bracket it is close up here for the uh, the first if and uh, the second if starts up here in this particular line and close up here and the else onto that so basically this is how you can implement so let's run this particular program and see what happens so when you run this particular program actually it tells you enter two numbers to find out if it is odd or actually even so onto that uh, let's enter let's enter uh, let's enter 40 and the second one let's enter 31 so actually it tells us your first number it is even and your second number actually it is odd but all of them they're in one line so to get them actually in different lines we just have to put here uh, uh, a new line backslash new line and here also we put up a, a backslash new line and here we also put up a, a backslash and a new line uh, so basically now if you run our code will be more smoother to show up in two lines so again here you're picking up uh, 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 50 and our second number we're putting up a 31 and it gives out in a very straight line as you can see up here your first number it is even and your second number it is odd so thank you for listening and uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, in our next lesson whereby we are going to talk about uh, the selection uh, of a switch statement.